Now we're gonna snap our fingers and look at the completed build. So we have our PC built, everything looks great and it's working great. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the MSI Z590 Godlike Motherboard. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. It is the Chinese version. You'll be purchasing from Newegg if you use that link in the video description. There'll also be a special discount for you and surprise. So go ahead and check that out. Everything looks great, supports Intel 11th gen CPUs and 10th gen if you're wondering with the Z590 chipset. This has Thunderbolt 4 on it with 40 gigabits per second. We have two LAN ports on here. One's 2.5 gig. The other is 10 gig, which is my personal favorite. Multiple M.2 slots right here. So we're showing three Gen 3, one Gen 4, two PCIe 4.0 X16 slots on this motherboard. Wi-Fi 6E and USB galore. This really is the top of the line motherboard for content creators, gamers, streamers, and editors. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. But first a word from our sponsor, Onda Technologies. If you're looking at buying this motherboard, be sure to use the Newegg link in the video description and enter the $20 off code that you see on screen right now. That's valid for the first 50 customers. And you'll also receive a special surprise mystery gift consisting of either keyboard, a mouse, headphones, a microphone, or a webcam. So be sure to save $20 dollars today on your purchase of this motherboard using the link in the description. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring some stickers, a VIP card. We also have some labels. It's our user guide and manual, very thick in multiple languages, going over everything you need to know about your new motherboard. And don't worry, even if you buy the Chinese version, this is still in English front and center for you. DIY stand setup instructions right here if you wanna take advantage and build the DIY stand, you have that option here. We have a necklace with MSI's logo on it, that's pretty cool. We have our controller. So this has a plus minus button power reset as well as overclocking settings and we can clear our CMOS right there. You may notice our M.2 expander, this is PCIe Gen 4. You can add two drives here, massive heat sink and dedicated fan. Tons of screws, braided cables. We have our armor for the motherboard itself, an MSI branded flash drive if you want to use that. Display port to our mini display port adapter cables for our Thunderbolt 4. We also have some um, thermal sensors that are included here. So some thermal sensing cables, if you want to set that up, they have you covered, hard drive cables, your standard data and power cables. We have some um, RGB adapters included as well. The cable, if you want to use the included controller and get that set up, they have you covered there. We have our Wi-Fi antenna and stand right here as well. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the motherboard. Here's the board up close, check it out. Everything looks great. We got the godlike branding here, Meg up at the top, Lightning Gen 4 M2 with a lot of labels and warnings for us depending on what we're gonna be installing for dim slots, CPU socket, reset power, everything's labeled for us really clearly. Audio Boost 5 HD there on the side, USB. This looks really nice. Let's flip it over to this side, my favorite side, looking at all of our USB ports here, our two LAN ports. Again, we got 10 gig LAN, dedicated um, clear and flash BIOS in CMOS buttons there, mini display port in if you wanna take advantage of Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi antenna hookup right there, all of our audio. This thing is loaded. Here's a look at the back side. Again, we even have MSI's um, Dragon logo here, godlike there on our shielding. Really high quality construction. Metal everywhere, it's really heavy. 
Now let's go ahead, let's take out all the screws and look at all of our expansion slots. Removing the covers reveal four M.2 slots with the first one being Gen 4, PCIe 4.0 and the remaining three being Gen 3 speeds. In regards to our three expansion slots, the first two, depending on your CPU, if you're using Intel 11th Gen, you'll get PCIe 4.0 out of those and 3.0 out of the remaining slot. All that information can be found in the user guide and manual. Page five is gonna go over the expansion slots for you. Page six is gonna have all of your storage information right there. So be sure to consult this and use this manual. This board is loaded though for storage as well as attaching any sort of expansion cards, GPUs, things like that. And don't forget, we can add that expander card to add two more M.2 cards at Gen 4 speeds. Now I just wanted to show you up close the board and all of our headers and connectors here. So we have some RGB, fan connectors, lots of fan connectors, USB, more RGB, now we'll look at the side here. If you want to add some hard drives, two USB 3.0 headers, both angled, so keep that in mind. System fans, USB type C, mainboard power connector, and more fan and pump connectors right there, more RGB too. And then moving up to the top, we have our CPU power right there. Now it's time to go ahead and get this installed. So for our storage, we're gonna use the MSI Spatium M450. This is a 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. So we're gonna install it right here, just like so. And now we have to take this screw and fasten it in place. For the CPU, we're gonna use the powerful yet budget-friendly Intel 11 600K CPU. And now we're gonna get it installed on the motherboard right here. So pop that open. And then you're gonna line everything up. So in this case, we have a little teeny tiny triangle down here. It's gonna be lined up with Pac-Man, the little Pac-Man guy right there. So just gently press it in place and then we're gonna put the cover back on. We should get a nice little pop or click. Okay, that was very uneventful, but there we go. We now have the CPU installed. For the RAM, we're gonna use two 16 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 from Lexar, bringing our total to 32 gigabytes. The board tells you exactly where to install your two sticks. So just line it up. It's only gonna go one way, so make sure you have the pins correctly, and then press in place. Same thing with the second stick. Line it up and press until you hear it snap in place. Now we're gonna snap our fingers and look at the completed build. So we have our PC built, everything looks great and it's working great. Let's go ahead, let's take a close up of all the different motherboard connections we're using in this build. Look at this board up close. We haven't put the covers on yet so you could see all of our connection options. So up at the top we have our CPU power connectors. Moving right along we have one system fan and one CPU fan right there. Then we have our beautiful screen and display. It looks so good. Main motherboard power cable right there. USB type C. Our GPUs installed. Further down we have our USB 3.0 under there. Additional RGB. Front panel connector. Our J Rainbow One in use. USB in use. And HD audio. I mean, look at this board, it's gorgeous. The Dragon's illuminated, beautiful RGB there. Our built-in screen and display is really cool. Any flickering you see, that's just the camera and the screen not getting along. There's no flickering in real life. Your eyes won't be able to see that flickering. And then our gorgeous light down here at the bottom. This board looks so nice. And now we have all the covers on as well. They just rest in place. I wasn't able to find a way to really get them to snap in or anything. So as long as your computer is going to stay stationary, they will cover and block the cables for you. And they do look nice. It's a nice touch on there. And then even up there for our CPU power as well. Really helping to block off a lot of those connections. Now we're in the motherboard bio settings. Ours is in English by default. So up at the top here, we have some quick tech specs. 
If for some reason yours is in Chinese or another language, because again, we have the Chinese international version, no big deal. You can see all the different supported languages right here and choose the one that you want. So CPU game boost, we have XMP profile one for our DDR4. So we will be getting faster speeds than what you're seeing right here. So easy mode, CPU, all of our specs, like our frequency, then we have our memory, our current frequency right here, and our XMP profile one that we need to make sure that we have enabled to use to take advantage of getting faster speeds than what's set by default. Storage information, there's our MSI M450 500 gig drive. Again, four M.2 slots. Our fan information, depending on which fan we're looking to see and keep some eyes on and tweak settings, this is what we got going on right here. Help section for different general help commands and keystrokes. M flash, CPU cooler if we want to tune that. We have the option right there. Hardware monitor, so we can enter into the hardware monitor. Just more information from what we were seeing on the previous screen. You can browse all of our different systems here. And then moving further along, Thunderbolt control, ACH RAID settings, debug code, LED control, easy LED control. So a lot of settings right here. And this is just in easy mode. Now let's go ahead, let's look at our advanced settings. So we're in our advanced settings right here. So let's go ahead, let's select settings and look at all the options we have here. We're not gonna go over each individual one. We're just gonna look at them in more detail though. I'll just scroll down. Feel free to pause the screen as needed. So there's our system settings, our advanced settings right here. Look at all the different options we have. And you can learn more if you hover and highlight over. So on this part of the screen, gives you some more information, which is nice if you're not sure about a setting. Here's our boot and sequence information. Security settings save and exit. Then we have our overclocking settings. We can choose our explore mode. So we can do normal or expert. We'll leave it in expert so you can see everything right here. So our CPU settings, our RAM settings. So in this case, we do want to enable this. So now we'll get our faster speeds. You can see what it's changing right there. We can fine tune and tweak voltage settings, and other settings right there. And then lastly, we have our M flash again. That's going to be to um, take USB to flash BIOS if you need to do that. And you may notice, depending on the mode you're in, easy or advanced, we have our boot priority right here as well. So that's a quick look at our MSI motherboard BIO settings. Now we've booted Windows and we're looking at MSI Center. This is gonna give us access to hardware monitoring, some additional features to control things like RGB to have access to Mystic Light, and we'll be able to control the display on the motherboard itself. So first up, let's look, we're in Mystic Light settings right here. And this is where we can control things that are connected like our motherboard or our RAM and we can change the colors. So you get the idea here. So we can pick the colors. Right now, we have it in, it looks like um, a rainbow setting, but let me see. I'm not showing that. I'm showing that it's supposed to be um, this flame setting right here. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna hold down the LED light to switch control. So it should, there we go. And we'll hold it down again to switch back. All right, so. Let's go ahead, let's choose what we want here. So if we wanted flame, for example, let's select apply and we'll see what happens. It should change. There we go. So now we're doing the flame settings. That will be for the whole motherboard, the fans included. Pretty neat, very um, realistic real-time control too. Not that much of a delay between when it's changing those settings for us. And there's a lot of different styles here you could choose from, right? So we could do, Meteor, let's try that. Let's see how Meteor looks on the board. Just hit apply. There we go. Now we have our Meteor settings here. Oh, that's cool. So it's doing it with the dragon. That's pretty sweet. And then it's moving with the fans. So you get the idea there. There's a lot of different styles. Pick the one that you prefer. We're gonna go back here and we're gonna control all of them at the same time. So I want everything to go back to rainbow so it can match. 
Give it a second. And here we are, we're now in rainbow for everything. So that's a little bit of mystic light. While we're in these settings, let's go back to our motherboard. And here's dynamic dashboard. So let's select the settings gear icon. And now for the dashboard, we could select tons of different things that we want to see displayed on our nice built-in display right here. So we could show like CPU, and we could show voltage temperature. I mean, you get the idea here, right? Fan speeds. So let's select some of these. Let's do GPU. GPU fan speed. We have a fan in system one. I actually don't think we have one in pump. Well, we'll leave that selected. We could do hardware status, different profiles like the default ones here you can choose or upload your own GIF, which is pretty cool. Type your own words. So let's go ahead and let's hit apply. And now we have right in here, this is so cool. We have all of our um, hardware monitoring and stats right there. We can easily glance and peek at any time. That screen is so, so cool. And I'm glad we can upload our own GIF as well. If you want to tackle that yourself, maybe you have a custom logo, things like that you want to loop there, you can do that. But really convenient, we can see our specs there. And with the cooler we picked, we have that option to see some of those specs there as well. So that's Dynamic Dashboard 2. Really, really cool. Speaking of hardware monitoring, let's go over to hardware monitoring right here. That's another tab. So we don't have to go into BIOS to see some of these settings. We have it all right here our frequency, our core clocks, temperatures, usage. All of our nice quick specs right at our fingertips, right on our Windows desktop. And lastly, you can select the support tab right here to view live updates. Just go ahead, scan, and you can see what's available. I also went ahead and updated the BIOS from this section as well. Just select the advanced option down here. Select yes, it'll scan and show you any updates that are available. Keep in mind, MSI does not recommend to update BIOS when system has no issues. If you're ever gonna update your BIOS, I would just recommend do it right away at the start. Don't do it all, or if you ever wanna do it or feel like you need to do it, then go ahead, do it right when you build your PC. So heaven forbid if you screw anything up, you've done it right at the start versus later. So in our case, we have one, looks like firmware update for our S360 core liquid fan, which is pretty cool. So we could do that if we wanted all from within our MSI center. There's a lot to love about this MSI godlike motherboard. It is one of the top dogs. It lives up to its name. There's so many great features jam-packed into this board. I didn't even talk about the tuning controller that you can use as well for overclocking right at your fingertips. There's so many different settings you can configure and tweak to your own personal preferences. My favorite features, hands down, are the built-in display on there. I love having that little built-in display. Really, really cool, especially if you don't have an AIO like I do that has a screen, you'll appreciate having that built right in. 10 gig LAN is must for me, that's essential because I have 10 gig networking here at DDHQ. So I really, really can't sing enough good praises about this board. I use MSI boards, all of my main builds here, so I stand by the quality. I expect it to last for years to come. Wi-Fi 6E is great. Again, 10 gig, 2.5 gig, giving you some nice future proofing and buffers for the way technology changes in the future. You'll be ready without having to completely rebuild your PC and it's got PCIe Gen 4 as well for really fast read and write speeds and if you want some of the latest and greatest GPUs you'll be able to plug them right into this motherboard and not have any issues.